Let's turn to Luke 12, 32 through 40. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, sell your possessions, and give to the needy. Provide yourself with a money bag that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fall, where no thief approaches and no mouth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Say rest for action, and keep your lamps burning, and be like the men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake. When he comes, truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them reliant at the table. And he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what time the thief was coming, he would not have left the house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the word of God for the people of God. In the last 12 months, I was blessed with the opportunity to serve us alongside with amazing soldiers and officers. I grew personally in so many different ways with challenges that were given to me. But the biggest blessing that I have had was being able to read through the whole scripture. I have done that once or twice before. I went through a Bible school preparing to be a youth pastor back in Switzerland. But it seemed this time I was more in it. I was more with it. I wanted to understand and grasp what the Word of God has prepared for me. And it was just like, because I took that challenge serious, God took it serious too. I may have to change that around. God took me serious and placed this challenge in front of me. In December last year, uh, we were already three months in deployment, I was asked to, um, if I would be willing to serve with our chaplain, Chaplain Mays, because we lost, unfortunately, our a religious affairs specialist. Chaplain May started earlier in the deployment uh, Bible study, small group, and when I switched over to him, I heard of it and joined in. And that Bible study would have the challenge given to read through the whole scripture before we would return back home. I took that challenge, and since I was a little late, I had to catch up. So it was about eight pages a day that I had to read. And for those who are interested, there's an app for that. Uh, you can go and download that app, and you give yourself whatever time frame you want, and it will calculate for you and tell you how many pages you have to read. So for a full year, it brings it down to three pages a day. Sounds pretty doable. Chaplain Mason and I, we would uh, read along and 
we would sit down and have conversation. We would discuss things that we didn't notice before when we read through scripture or a particular part before. Stuff that would move us or um, stuff that we didn't notice. I would ask a lot of questions about things. Why is it that way? And, and what is the backstory? Is there something that I may did not know, didn't understand? And all those conversations were so interesting to me. And there was a reoccurring theme, a reoccurring answer that he gave me to all those questions. And I'd like to take you along with those today. His answer was always, it is a heart thing. So we'll be covering a lot of Bible scriptures, that's why I printed, uh, had them printed in the bulletin. You can follow up on those if you can't read along, if I go too fast. Take your time and read them, because just because I'm saying something doesn't mean it's all true. I hope to be truthful with what I'm saying. So let's turn to the first scripture, which is in Exodus. Um, if you want to read, I'm not going to go in detail, all the plagues that happen. Remember, Israelites were in Egypt, and they wanted to leave. God sent Moses, and God also sent ten plagues. You can read those between Exodus 7 and Exodus 12. All the plagues that happened. Water that turned to blood. Frogs, gnats, flies, livestock that died from the Egyptians. Hail, locusts. Everything went dark. And every single firstborn of the Egyptians died. The scripture I want to focus on is a little later. In Exodus 14, 10, Egyptians were let go. Pharaoh said, yes, you can go. They come to the Red Sea, and that's what happens there. When the Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And the fear greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, it is because there is no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptian, for it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Okay, next one. Go a little bit forward in the story of Israel, and we come to the place where they just walked across the Jordan River. They approached Jericho. In Joshua 6, 1 through 5, it says, Now Jericho was set up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho unto your hands with its king and the mighty man of wealth. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. This shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns, before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow their trumpets, and when they make a long blast with their ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, 
Then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. It's pretty impressive. Let's see what happened, what we did. Joshua 7, 1. But the people of Israel broke faith in regards to the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Sabidi, son of Sarah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. I want to skip one more. Next, we're established. We, we are in the kingdom of Israel. And there's that one enemy that comes back again and again. You can beat over and over again. The Philistines once again attacked Israel. And this time, the Philistines were successful. In 1 Samuel 5, 1 through 5, we read what they did. When the Philistine captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashad. Then the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it up beside Dagon. It's their God. And when the people of Ashad rose early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back up in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. And had and the head of Dagon in both hands were laying caught up on the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not tread on the threshold of Dagon's in Ashdod to this day. So what is their reaction after all this? If we go to, we'll jump over on 5-7. In 5-7 they say, And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, The ark of God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is hard against us and against Dagon, our God. Their plan. 6 7. Now, then take and prepare a cart and two milk cows on which there has never come a yoke, and yoke the cows to the cart, but take their calves home away from them. Then take the ark of the Lord and place it on the cart and put it on a box at the side, the figures of gold which you are returning to him as a guilt offering. Then send it off and let it go its way. And watch, if it goes up on the way to its own land, to Beth Shemesh, then it is he who has done this great harm. But if not, then, it, then we shall know that it is not his hand that has struck us. It happened to us by accident.
and the cows went straight in the direction of Beth Shemesh along the highway, blowing as they went. They, went, they turned neither to the right nor to the left, and, their Lord, and the lords of the Philistines went after them as far as the border of Beth It just fascinated me as you read through scripture over and over again. Why would they do this right after it happened? I mean, what would be your reaction if you have seen those ten plagues happen? How would you approach your next challenge. Or you walk around this great fortress with this humongous wall six days, once a day. On the seventh day, you do it seven times. The last time, you blow your horns and scream bloody murder, and the walls come down. But then, you do not do what you were told to do by the God who just torn those walls down in front of you. You just got your enemies, God. The Philistines were afraid of the God of Israel. But you just got him. You take it and you put it in your own collection of gods. The next day you wake up and your god is on, your, on his face. Yeah, I guess something happened. You fall down, let's put it back up. The next day, again, but this time, head and hands are cut off, only the torso stays. Yeah, this god is bigger than our god. They even say it, they recognize it. But what do they do instead of trying to recognize how can we dump our God and worship this almighty God? No, we'll put it on a card and send it right back. We don't want anything to do with him. We like our God. It is so clear to me what I would do. Is it so clear? I view myself as a firm believer in God. I believe what the Bible says. I know that Jesus Christ died for me and my sins. He made it possible that I can be reunited with my Heavenly Father. But so often when there is a challenge, when there is something happening that I do not understand, or if I disagree with what happens to me when I believe it's unjust or just simply not fair, what do I do? I go to God and accuse Him of being the instigator. Immediately, you did this to me. Why? Or, the other option is, God, why did you let it happen? What have I done to you that you let it happen? But both of those reactions are the same exact thing that we have read over and over and over again in different stories, in different ways. It is our heart that is the biggest challenge. It's so hard to do hard things. The challenge that I received of reading through the scripture, from the front cover to the back cover, to take the time to really want to understand and not skip aside a page, go over those 
sorry, boring name lists. Um, they are as much as a part of it as those stories that we just read that fascinate us. Because you may find some names that you're like, wait a moment, I just saw that. Even in those pages, there's meaning in it. I want to challenge you this morning to take the time to commit yourself to three pages, three pages a day, to read through the scripture and let the word of God do what it does the best. Touch your heart. Change your heart. Be touched and transformed. No sermon can do this. Not that one hour that you have here at church can do this. It's that daily time that you devote to that God that sent the ten plagues. That God that turned down humongous walls that do not seem to be possible to overcome. That God that is bigger than any other God. Are you ready? Are you willing to have His Word? Not my Word, not Rachel's Word, not Catherine's Word, nobody that speaks here, but His Word change your life. I will be starting uh, Wednesday in a week, a weekly Bible study. We'll meet on Wednesday evening while the choir is meeting, 7 o'clock over in Union, have a coffee, always good, and go over the Bible. Read those scriptures and talk about questions that we may have. Discovering what it means to us and what the transformation can be. And my beautiful husband and I, We'll be also doing a more couples-orientated small group on Friday evenings. If you're interested in that, either one of those, just come after this service to me, and I'll give you more information. It's the Word of God that will change our lives, will change your life. And this is what I'd like to give to you this morning. It's not comes, it doesn't come from me, it's just... A little secret that I learned over the last 12 months. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.